Hello, good morning, students. I am Shudipta, and today I will discuss chapter three. And the name of the chapter is the luncheon. The luncheon is composed by William Somerset Maugham. So let's begin the new chapter from your book, New Images of Class Seven. The story, the luncheon, is written by William Somerset Maugham. Mr. Mom was born in 1874 in Britain. He was a renowned story writer, novelist, and playwright. He traveled to Germany to study literature and philosophy. His first novel, Lisa of Lambeth, became a bestseller. Some of his most appreciable works are Of Human Bondage. The Moon and Sixpence, etc. Mom died in 1965. And this story is one of his greatest creations. So let's, let's begin the story. Thank you. So, name of the chapter is The Luncheon. Actually, what does it mean? The luncheon means a short lunch when it is taken in course of a meeting. Okay, sure. It is the luncheon. It is the third chapter from your book, class 7, English. So, let's begin. I caught sight of her at the play. And in answer to her beckoning, here beckoning means signaling someone to come nearer, okay? I went over during the interval and sat down beside her. It was long since I had last seen her. And if someone had, had not mentioned her name, I hardly think I would have recognized her. She addressed me brightly. Well, it's many years since we first met. How time goes fly. Do you remember the first time I saw you? You asked me to luncheon. Did I remember? It was 20 years ago and I was in Paris. I was living in Paris. So, once the narrator went a play to watch a drama where he saw his a fan of past, the narrator almost forgot the fan because it was a long time. In between, someone took her name and then the narrator recognized her. They recognized each other. They had some conversation from past. So, next, from here. It was 20 years ago and I was living in Paris. I had a tiny apartment. Tiny means little, small. In the Latin, in the Latin quarter overlooking a symmetry. Symmetry means... <coughs> Symmetry means graveyard, okay? And I was earning barely enough money to keep body and soul together. She had read a book of mine and had written to me about it. I answered, thanking her. And presently, I received from her another letter saying that she was passing through. Passing through means to come, okay? To come. Paris and would like to have a chat with me but her time was limited and the on, the only free moment she had was on the following Thursday. She was spending the morning in Luxembourg and would I give her a little luncheon at Foyots afterwards. 
Foyots is a restaurant at which the French senators eat. Senators means the member of parliament, okay, or the politicians. They are very rich. So, Foyots is a very expensive restaurant. And it was so far beyond my means and I had never even thought of going there but I was flattered. Flattered means I was pleased. I was grateful. And I was too young to have learned to say no to a woman. Few men, I may add learn this until they are too old to make it of any consequence to a woman that they say. I had 80 francs, gold francs, to last me the rest of the month and a modest luncheon should not cost more than 15. If I cut off coffee for the next two weeks, I could manage well enough. So, it was the story of 20 years ago, okay? The narrator lived in Paris with a small, in a small apartment, a teeny apartment with a little income. His pen wrote him to meet him at Foyot's for a lunch. The writer became scared. Why? Because the restaurant was very expensive and he had only 80 francs and with this little money he had to save for the expenditure for the current month. Then he desired that he would not take coffee for two months consecutively for the little savings. Okay? Then, the next para. <clears throat> I answered that I could meet my friend by correspondence at Foyles. On Thursday at half past twelve, she was not so young as I expected, and in appearance, imposing rather than attractive. Imposing means <clears throat> prospectively. She was in fact a woman of 40, a charming age, but not one that excites a sudden and devastating passion at first sight. Devastating means very, very attractive, gorgeous or here overwhelming. And she gave me the impression of having more teeth, white and large and even, than were necessary for any particular purpose. She was talkative, but since she seemed Inclined to talk about me. Inclined means persuade. I was prepared to be an attentive listener. I was stalled. Stalled means frightened. I was very, the, the writer was very frightened. Why? When the bill of fare was brought. For the price were a great deal higher than I had anticipated. Anticipated means expected. If the bill would be more than my expectation, how it would be possible to deposit the bill? This was the reason. But she reassured me. I never eat anything for luncheon, she said. Oh, don't say that. I answered generously. I never ate more than one thing. I think people eat 
far too much nowadays. A little fish, perhaps, I wonder if they have any salmon. Well, it was all in the year for salmon and it was not on the bill of fear. But I asked the waiter if there was any. Yes, a beautiful salmon had just come in. It was the first they had had. I ordered it for my guest. The waiter asked her if she would have something while it was being cooked. No, she answered. I never eat. Here, here. No, she answered. I never eat more than one thing unless you have a little caviar. I never mind caviar. What is caviar? Caviar is a preparation of eggs. Okay? And the eggs are from fish. It is the preparation. It is a dish made of fish eggs. Okay? So, what happens? Finally, the narrator, finally, the narrator met her, met the fan at Fords. She was a middle-aged woman. She was near about 40 years old. She was looking impressed and she was very talkative. The narrator was silent as a listener. The narrator wanted to offer her a general dish, but he did not tell her this. Firstly, she told that she never ate anything for lunch. As the time passed on, the narrator came to know that the woman was a dangerous foodie fellow. She pretended as she was in a dieting, but what happens? He started eating like anything. The narrator was bound to order salmon fish, which was very costly. Okay? After that, the woman expressed her desire. What was the desire? The desire was while the salmon was being cooked and it will take much time to prepare. So, he desired to have a dish and the dish is caviar. The dish was highly expensive. Okay? Then, next. My heart sank a little. I knew I could not afford caviar, but I could not very well tell her that. I told the waiter by all means to bring caviar for myself. I chose the cheapest dish of the menu and that was a mutton chop. So from the menu, the narrator chose mutton chop because it is cheaper. I think you are unwise to eat meat, she said. I don't know how you can ex expect to work after e eating heavy things like chops. I don't believe in overloading my stomach. Unwise means foolish. Okay? Chops means here, chops means there, uh, it may be uh, some pieces of meats or chops means also a uh, fast food. Okay? The fast food, the preparation of meat. Then came the question of drink. I never drink anything for luncheon, she said. Neither do I, I answered promptly. Promptly means quickly. Except white wine. She proceeded as though I had not spoken. These French white wines are so light. They are wonderful for digestion. So, what happens here? 
the narrator was totally helpless as he didn't have enough money with him. His heart was pumping and shocking with fear. He, he didn't pay the bill. That's why he ordered mutton chop for him only, which was apparently cheapest. After this, his fan mocked at him and she advised and she mocked at him and she told him unwise that you are a fool, you are taking the mutton chop. And she again told, I never ate more than one thing. In between the gossip, she wanted to have a drink and then she told again, I never drink anything for lunch. But the woman ordered again a very expensive drink, that is white one, that is white wine. Next, what would you like? I asked, hospitable still, hospitable means like friendly, but not exactly effusive, effusive means showing too much emotion, okay, it is just, it is just a, it is called, uh, a responsibility as you are here with your guest so it is a fast responsibility to ask to offer her she gave me a bright and amicable flash of her white teeth amicable means friendly okay my doctor won't let me drink anything but champagne I fancy I turned a triple pier, I ordered half a bottle. I mentioned casually that my doctor had absolutely forbidden me to drink champagne. What are you doing to drink then? Water. She ate the caviar and she ate the salmon. She talked gaily of art and literature and music. But I wondered what the bill would come to. When my mutton chop arrived, she took me quite seriously to task. I see that you are in the habit of eating a heavy luncheon. I am sure it's a mistake. Why don't you follow my example? And just eat one thing. I am sure you would feel Ever so much better for it. I am going to eat only one thing. I said as the I said as the waiter came again in the bill of fear. She waved him aside with an eerie gesture. Eerie gesture means no no don't come. Go back, go back, stop or go back. This is called waved him. waved him aside with an ear gesture. No, no, I never eat anything for luncheon. Just a bite. I never want more than that. And I eat that more as an excuse for conversation than anything else. I couldn't possibly eat anything more unless they had some of those giant paragus. I should be sorry to leave Paris without having some of them. My heart sank. I had seen them in the shops and I knew that they were horribly expensive. My mouth had often watered at the sight of them. So, what is happening? As the time is going on, the author is coming to know that his fan was very greedy and she is very foodie also. She wanted to know my choice 
and the author said his doctor won't let him drink anything but champagne. Here the narrator was bound again to order half bottle champagne for the lady and he took only a glass of plain water. Okay, a glass of plain water. She ate up all the things <coughs> and lectured about what? Lectured about arts, literature, music and she told him to follow her eating habit. In the meantime, the waiter was coming with the bill of fear. Okay? And she at once forbade the waiter to submit the bill as she was still hungry. And she waved him aside with an eerie gesture. Don't come with the bill. I'm still hungry. If there are some others preparation, please give me the menu in this way. She wanted to represent herself. Okay. Actually, she was very greedy, very greedy. And what? And she told the same thing. No, no, I never ate anything for luncheon okay just a bit i never ate more than one thing the same thing she was just shameless she again ordered giant paragus which was a special dish of paris and expensive too the narrator became horrified thinking about the bill to be paid and sometimes his mouth watered at the sight of the delicious dishes. So students, it is the first part of chapter 3, the luncheon. Okay. The second part, it will be completed. I think I will be come very soon in front of you. Till then, bye-bye and stay safe at your home. Thank you.